the thing that was sort of happening right around the same time was, you know, rock and roll music coming in. And, uh, is that the deal? It's kind of a turn on switch. Got some fancy chords these days. So, even though he sort of envisioned this thing as this subtle effect, like you kind of heard on the Chet Atkins thing, what he didn't envision was rock and roll coming in within a couple of years, and a guy like Scotty Moore saying, well, won't happen if you put it on the triple pickup and turned it up real loud. <laughs> like a whole separate kind of a thing, you know? Uh, and that was really kind of how tape echo sort of changed from just being sort of a subtle effect to being the sort of crazy effect in rock and roll. And, uh, you know, guys like Cliff Gallup that played with Gene Vincent and the Blue Caps, that's probably my favorite example. They took it to total extremes, you know, levels of echo that nobody would have used three years earlier on a recording. So, moving along, thank you once again for bringing the Echosonic Tape Amplifier here today. Yes, sir. I'll just started singing through the thing, didn't you? That's right, Elvis did sing That's awesome. <laughs> well, um, if we have enough time, I, since you're here, I was going to read the, the, the Scotty Moore chapter out of my, my first book. But yeah, there's. He told me some pretty great stories of how they'd be playing to 10,000 people. And they'd show up in these huge places and they would just give them the microphone that they'd used for the, the wrestling match. Or, you know, the, the, the cattle auction that they had, had the week before. You know? How many times have you heard, don't worry, we got a sound system. <laughs> you don't have to bring yours. Exactly. So, uh, another effect that... Uh, that we all know and love today is tremolo, which often gets referred to as vibrato incorrectly. Now what's interesting about all this, like I was saying, when you back up and you look at the big picture, is that a lot of this technology was coming from other places. And uh, tremolo and reverb both came from the electronic organ. Now of course, electronic organ is kind of a novelty today, but back then, you know, it was huge business. You know, you'd turn on the TV, you'd see Lawrence Welk and all these kind of shows, and there was guys that, made her living playing electronic organ. So in the late 1930s, Diarmond came up with this tremolo, and it was sort of intended as a subtle effect on an electronic organ. And within a few years, they were actually marketing this Diarmond tremolo pedal that you could go out and buy. And um, I know that uh, there's a recording by Roosevelt Sykes with Big Bill Brunzi from the early 40s where you can hear him playing with this tremolo going on. I think that may be the earliest recorded example. But uh, again, it sort of took rock and roll coming in and uh, guys like Link Ray who had this effect and they said, well, what would happen if you put it on the treble pickup and turned it up real loud? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I, I just brought along a little tremolo pedal, but I'm just going to demonstrate the, the effect here real quick. So you had guys like Link Ray who just sort of started using the effect not as it was intended, you know, just in the middle of rumble, he's going. And again, you know, the guy that invented tremolo, if he heard that, he would probably be completely horrified. Like, what are these teenagers doing? That's not what I meant. 
But uh, but that was a, an effect that went straight from you know the, the electronic organ to, to guitar. And um, another one that's very similar like that is reverb. Now, a lot of people know what reverb is. It's kind of like what you hear on my vocal right now. And uh, it's built into everything now. You know, they can digitally model it and it's, it's no big deal. They can use a little tiny chip and make it sound like a cavern. But back in the old days, it was a pretty difficult thing to achieve. And the way that they finally did it was uh, the Hammond Organ Company invented this spring reverb that was about this big. And uh, Fender was the guy that figured out, oh, you can actually fit one of those in the bottom of an amp. Let's put those inside a guitar amp. And that was around 1960 or 61. And, uh, you know, before reverb came along, you, you didn't hear the sort of cavernous echo on your, on your guitar. And that's why a lot of our rockabilly records don't have that kind of sound. But what's funny to me, you know, when you look at the history of music and the history of technology, is right when surf music was coming along, that's when reverb was invented. It was almost at the exact same time. And uh, Dick Dale, who was kind of Leo Fender's um, teenage caveman test monkey. <laughs> yes, yeah, should. Uh, you know, he, he gave him one of these new reverb units. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that when Leo invented this reverb, he probably envisioned country players, you know, maybe he'd give one to the Bob Wills band and see what they could do with it. But he gave one to, to Dick Dale, you know, and Dick Dale was like, well, what happens if you put it on the treble pickup and turn it up all the way? <laughs> so that's sort of a subtle reverb effect. I'm sure that's kind of what they intended, you know. Hopefully you can hear the subtle reverb effect over the, uh, the tube popping out of the, the, the amp over here. But then, you know, Dick Dale, he put it on the treble pickup and he turned it up and then it became...